Evening all, it's IK Dave here. How is everyone doing? It looks like I've got audio working. It looks like I can hear what's going on. That's a good start. How is everyone? Do uh, drop a message in the chat once you're here. And uh, we've actually got some proper questions to do this week. So I'm uh, I'm going to go through some of those, get started on those straight away. So that this is actually a useful stream for people jumping in. Uh, so the first question, here it is. IK answers. Do you think Apple is wasting their time with foldables? I think so. Would you buy one? And coming back to my studio, let me just find that question up because I've just realized that it's not actually playing to me. Um, do you think Apple is wasting their time with foldables? I do. Uh, I do think it's a bit of a waste of time. Oh, we've got a few people joining in the chat now. So we've got Rob Lincoln here. How are you doing? Just here for a few minutes. And uh, Michael Pepper and uh, John. Hey, how is everyone going? Can I just play that question again? Uh, and can you let me know if you can hear the audio from it? Because it's not playing for me. But... I cave answers. Do you think Apple is wasting their time with foldables? I think so. Would you buy one? Do let me know if you can hear that audio coming through on your side. If not, then I'll just carry on with uh, reading them out through the rest of the show. But yes, in terms of foldable phones, I think that Apple may well be uh, wasting a bit of time on this because I, I just don't feel like it's something that the general public actually wants. Uh, do let me know if I'm wrong in the chat. Are you interested in a foldable phone? It For me, it seems like it's a technology that's looking for a problem to solve, uh, and I don't think that's the thing. Okay, uh, so you can hear it. That's great. Good, good, good. Sound is louder than me. Okay, I will turn that down for the next one a little bit. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, foldable phones. Do we... Um, do we like them? Is there anyone in the chat who's actually got a foldable phone? I know, obviously, it's going to be mainly Apple fans who are in the chat right now. But have you used one? Have you played around with these foldables? Is the crease something that just really puts you off? Do let me know down in the chat. Uh, John is saying um, they're finicky at best and don't save any space. They simply look kind of neat. Yeah, and I think that's the thing. We've had stuff that looks cool. We've had things like clear OLED displays, you know, like see-through TVs. And, you know, okay, cool idea. It looks really cool at a trade show. It looks quite cool if you use it for, you know, the, the window of a shop so that you can have a display behind it and then you can have stuff going on on the, on the glass. Um, but I don't think it's something that anyone's ever going to have in their house because why would you want to be able to see through the image that you're trying to watch? I don't really quite get that. So... That's that's my thoughts on it anyway. Maybe I need to bring my audio up. So I'm just going to do a little bit of extra over here. Hopefully that's not super duper too loud. But do let me know. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. So Michael Pepper has got the Pixel Fold, the Z Fold 4, and the Vivo X Fold. I don't know what that one is. Very specific segment that would use them. Yeah, I think, I think that's really what it comes down to. I think it's only a product for tech enthusiasts. And at that point... That's not something then that Apple is going to actually produce. Um, I suppose the closest we've had to that is Vision Pro right now. So uh, Vision Pro is about as uh, techy specific as you can get. Rob Lincoln suggesting a uh, aquarium display. I mean, yeah, but is that a mainstream thing that lots of people are going to want? They're going to want fish swimming around behind Goodfellas when they're watching it on. You know, I I don't quite I don't quite get it. But yeah, I, I think that's uh, that's definitely, it's an interesting technology. I don't think it's something that's going to uh, become mainstream with the foldable phones. You know, they've been out for years now. You still only see a handful of them when you're out and about. Mm, I don't think the demand is there. Right, let's move on to the next question. But if you've got questions yourselves, do drop them into the chat for me as well. I cave answers. Are you planning on going to WWDC? Will you be live streaming that day? How much would I love to go to WWDC? I do not have anywhere near the budget for going to something like WWDC. But yes, streaming, that is a thing that we will be doing. Um, I'm probably going to book the day off work and possibly the day after off work. Uh, because over here it's 6pm when the WWDC keynote starts. It's normally a good couple of hours for uh, for the keynote at WWDC because they've got a lot to talk about. You've got iOS uh, iPad OS, TV OS, Mac OS, HomePod software, and now Vision OS. And Vision OS is going to have presumably a huge amount of stuff to talk about um, 
for its first year at WWDC. So I think that's going to be uh, definitely a day that I need to have uh, the following day off so that I can make some content through the night and uh, and get it out as quick as possible. Um, just back onto the uh, back onto the foldables here. If you really multitask and you're looking for a pocketable tablet, that's where they stand out. This is for the foldable phones, but you could buy a phone and a small tablet for the same price. Well, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I'm, as I've said a few times, I'm in the market for an iPad mini. I will be updating my phone at the end of the year as well, which, um, yeah, it's going to be a, an expensive September, I think. But yes, Christopher Gavin's still surprised that Apple haven't done a big old iPad like the Microsoft Surface Studio. Well, that was more sort of iMac size, wasn't it? Wasn't it like 32 inches and you could kind of pull it down like an easel? We, we've used it uh, a couple of times on um, uh, on the show when we've been talking about it. Because I think the iMac would be a really good uh, candidate to have a display that moves down to like a drawing board style and then maybe integrate with Apple Pencil but not touch touch as such. I think that would be a, a pretty cool idea, have your Apple Pencil stuck to the top of an iMac and be able to uh, and pull that down. I think that would be quite cool. Um, Christopher Gavin, I'm very surprised. Yep, that's the one I've just read. Blech. Stupid. Um, when I hear WWDC, I think, why would Dave care, lol? <laughs> Fair enough. Um, WWDC always an interesting one because you... It renews all the devices we've already got, which is the the best part about it. Like it's it's exciting to get new hardware products coming out at different times of the year, but when you get WWDC, we all get new features for the stuff we already have. So like that's surely the most exciting part of the year. And as yeah, as much as I would love to get over there and, uh, and be there in person, that would be amazing. Um, We've got another comment down here, Berserk, saying, I'm still waiting on the Mac Mini M3. Any hopes it might be unveiled at WWDC? I don't imagine it would be. Uh, the main reason for that is we're now hearing that the M4s will be out before the end of the year, so it may be that they actually just hold off on the M3 and they go straight to M4 on the Mac Mini, um, which I don't really understand why they would keep skipping stuff, like have a board, make it compatible with chips going forward that would make more sense to me um but uh but yeah i, I think if it's going to come out it might also be at that kind of may release date that we've got in the diary that we've been hearing about as well that's for uh, the new ipads and things like that so uh, i'm not 100 percent sure on that one iMac whiteboard says Rob Lincoln. Yeah, I guess if you were to do a massive uh, iMac like that, that you could kind of write on with the pencil, it would be tricky. Uh, it, it would kind of come across like a, a, a bit of a whiteboard. Oh, my, I have a hardware problem. I think with my uh, MacBook Air, every time I'm typing, it's throwing in loads of extra. Um, enters like after every keystroke uh, and I don't know what's going on I've done a couple of restarts uh, and that's not fixed it so I might have to actually go to the Apple store I'm going to have to send a uh, message from my watch which is quite annoying talk amongst yourselves <laughs> won't be a moment The uh, the keyboard on the Apple Watch is not great yet, but uh, right. Let's see what we got. Uh, Rob Lincoln's off. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming, buddy. Uh, appreciate having you here. Right. Let's get on to the next question that we've got, and then, as I say, if you've got any questions that you want to ask in the live stream, do feel free to uh, chuck them in the chat. I cave answers. When will we get a hole punch display on the iPhone? That's what I'm waiting for to upgrade as the full screen iPhone won't happen for another five eight years. Okay, so hole punch displays. Do we actually... Uh, this is another one where I'm struggling to care because I think we have Dynamic Island now, which is that kind of thing. It's pretty close. Uh, there's no 
real advantage to go into a hole punch display because then you're not going to get face ID, you're not going to get any of those kind of things. So it's really difficult to see where the advantage would be. They they might start to put some stuff under the display, um, but it's oh my goodness, my my Mac is doing all sorts of weird stuff today. This is really strange. I have no idea what's going on. Um, yeah, so hole punch displays under yeah, putting some of the face uh, ID sensors and that kind of thing under the display is a potential, but. Uh, the actual camera is going to need to have a lens because, yeah, that's nobody's managed to do an under display camera that looks any good yet, which uh, which is upsetting. Michael Pepper is saying, uh, I wonder why Apple hasn't changed the design of the Mac Mini, given how much less space Apple Silicon takes up. They could make it the size of an Apple TV. Thoughts? Yeah, we were all thinking this at the beginning because the first uh, Mac Minis, the M1s, when they first came out, were super, uh, you know, they took up almost none of the interior space. Uh, it's, you know, less than half of the space inside is actually used. They still use a... Uh, a power supply that is way too big for the uh, for the devices that they're powering. They're like 150 watt power supplies, and they're supplying like a 20 watt system. So uh, they could definitely miniaturize it. I think the reason they haven't is because a there's a lot of servers that are already kind of set up to take Mac Minis. So there's a, a part of it that's that. Um, that's a, a size that has been going on for a long time for the the Mac Mini. Like if you put the uh, Power Mac G4 Cube on top of it, it's the same footprint. It's exactly the same. It was also the same footprint as the original Apple TV and the uh, time capsules, the original ones before they made them like a tall Apple TV. There's there's a whole bunch of stuff that has come out with exactly that same footprint. And uh, I don't really know why, but Apple seems to really like that footprint. And now they've moved it on to the, uh, the, the studio as well. So very interesting there. We've got a few new people in the chat. Uh, Dagger uh, is saying Mac minimized for several racks. There we go. Yeah, um, yeah. If if you were to make the Mac Mini smaller, you know, people will come up with ways to uh, to rack mount them. But at the moment, there are a lot of server farms that are kind of set up for that Mac Mini already. So I guess there's a convenience factor there of not changing it. Uh, Tech for your needs says hello, folks. Hello, um, and yeah, uh, Daisy in the rain is here. Hello, how are you? Uh, Dugger is saying um, could make a more versatile Mac Mini uh, for extra storage space. Yeah, if you make it smaller, you're going to be able to fit more into the racks. It, you know, it's as simple as when Apple removes the uh, the power brick from the iPhone boxes, and then you can fit more of them on a plane. Yeah, you, you make it smaller, you can get more in there. Makes sense. Right, let's get on with the next question. I cave answers. Will you upgrade your Mac to the 15 inch? You've always stuck with the smaller size. So yes, I've always been. Um, so the the only MacBooks I've ever had, uh, I've never actually owned a MacBook Pro. That's one of the weird things that I think uh, surprises a lot of people. But yeah, I've never had a MacBook Pro. Uh, I had the original uh, Mac Mini that I had was the 11 inch, um, a 2011, and then I had the M2 MacBook Air. And those are the only two that I've ever had. So I've always gone for the smallest size, uh, partially because I'm more interested in what I can do with the device than how big the display is. Uh, and when I'm sitting in my office here, uh, I do have like a 40 inch 4K display in front of me. So whatever I'm working on, I'm going to use the extra display space that I have from that. Uh, and I'd much rather have the smaller system that I can carry around more easily that's that's the main reason i i wouldn't be looking to uh to change to the 15 inch macbook air i don't think um unless i was kind of going to be working away from the desk far far more and and need to have that extra space that i could take with me but even then i would probably take an ipad and a smaller macbook air uh, over a larger one because then i could essentially use it with sidecar mode and have the option of dual displays, that kind of stuff. You know, it gives me a little bit more flexibility. Michael Pepper is saying, imagine a USB-C powered Mac Mini being able to carry it in your pocket and connect it with a battery pack and connect to a portable display or use sidecar. Would be intrigued. So, yes, but that's kind of, we like, we already have MacBooks. 
Um, so I don't, I don't really know what the advantage of it is. So my friend Sigmund as well, who uh, uh, runs the uh, Magic Rays of Lights over at Mac Stories, he um, has converted some Apple TVs to be USB-C powered. Um, there are some conversion kits that you can get where you can basically replace the mains power with USB-C um, because he uh, travels around quite a bit. Oh, it's Brad. Hey, how are you doing, Brad? Uh, Brad was on today's podcast. If you haven't checked it out yet, go and do that. Uh, not now. Not now. Wait until the end of the live stream and then you can go and watch it. Um, but yeah, like he's he's got a, a pair of Apple TVs that he takes with him that are... USB-C powered so he doesn't have to worry about different voltages and all that kind of malarkey when he's traveling. Um, yeah, and and uh, some interesting stuff going on with that. But USB-C powered Mac Mini, I don't see why you couldn't because the uh, the board itself and the it's it's all easily powered uh, by, well, it's in a MacBook Air and uh, you just power that with USB-C, even the MacBook Pros and stuff. Um, so there's there's no reason that you couldn't do that. Um, Degar says teachers are massive pro user group that are completely ignored by tech YouTube iPad is a key teaching tool 8 gigs of RAM in a Mac is insufficient 8 gigs in 8 gigs of RAM in Macs is not insufficient at all it's it's plenty um, I'm, I'm interested in why you think 8 gigs isn't enough because my all of my systems all of my video editing is all done on uh, 8 gig M2 and M1 systems so I, I've never had a problem with it. I'm not quite sure why everyone seems to think it's a problem unless they're trying to use a MacBook Air for something that it's not really for. Um, Brad is asking, I cave answers, why did Apple stop making airport devices? What, would they make something similar as the hub for home automation with HomeKit eventually... Uh, when Oh, sorry, when HomeKit eventually becomes widely used. I mean, quite possibly. Oh, Sigmund's here as well. Here he is. Uh We'll come to yours in just a second, Sigmund. Um, yeah, so in terms of the airport devices, this is something that we were talking about with Sam Cole on the podcast uh, about three weeks ago. Um, I, I've i always said that I think the, uh, the HomePods and the Apple TVs and things like that should become like their own mesh network, which would be really cool. But I also think uh, at the time when Apple brought out the airports, it was before there were really like home wireless routers that, existed really um you know when the uh when the ibook came out with wi-fi built in it was revolutionary so they needed to have something like that but now everyone when you get a internet service you're going to be dumped uh some sort of a wireless router that you can use in your home and uh most people aren't that bothered about upgrading um we are in the techie community but uh but other people are not so yeah, I think I think that's the big thing for Apple. I don't think there's enough demand for uh, for that sort of thing, for the level of demand that they would need to make it worthwhile for them. Uh, I know there are small companies that can make routers, but I, I just don't think Apple's got enough. But it would be great to have like a privacy focused mesh network from Apple. I think that would be great. Um, right down to Sigmund uh, with Black Magic announcing 17K resolution cameras today and people using proxy files for editing, how much power do we really need from future Macs? Um, so, I would say, uh, I, I think most of it's going to be cloud, yeah. So, with, with people editing from proxy files, that makes all the sense in the world. It just depends on what these 17K cameras are designed for. I haven't seen any of this so far. But if it's designed to be for panoramas so that you can use it for things like immersive video, then you're probably going to want to do more of that locally so that you can see what you're working with. Uh, and especially if you're going to be sending that potentially to a Vision Pro or something um, to to experience uh, and to check your edits. But um, yeah, I, I, I would say that I'm not 100% uh, sure. I, I'll have to have a look into this Black Magic stuff, but uh, it sounds really interesting. Um, Degur, 8 gigs is not enough. Teachers live in the browser, upwards of 80 tabs open consistently, 8 gigs is not enough. No, so it's not enough for your use case, but for the majority of people, it is. Um, and Apple's Pro computers don't come with 8 gigs, they come starting at 16. Um, yes, there is the 14-inch MacBook Pro with an M3 inside it, which does come with 8. It's not really a Pro system, it's a MacBook Air with more holes in it. Um, but if you know that you're going to need more than 
8 gigs, then you can spec it up. But it's not uh, required for everyone, so there's no reason that Apple should start it uh, at a higher level of RAM because you need it for a specific uh, use case, I would say. Right, let's jump into the next question, I think. A cave answers. Are iPads dead now that Vision Pro is out? So are the iPads are the iPads now dead because Vision Pro's come out? When we were talking to Viper the other week, um, that was one of the things that he mentioned, is that since uh, Vision Pro's existed, he has really not gone for the iPad at all. He has done pretty much everything that he would do with the iPad in Vision Pro. And that's absolutely fine. I don't think it's going to replace it that quickly. And I think the main reason for that is that, uh, you know, the iPad starts at one-tenth of the price of the Vision Pro. Um, so if you've got kids, then you're probably more likely to buy them an iPad each than a Vision Pro each. You know, seven grand or 700 quid. You know, it's it's a tough one. Um but yeah, I think the Vision Pro possibly does sort of signal the beginning of the end of the iPad, absolutely. And I think that the the iPad has kind of sat in that middle ground between the iPhone and the Mac for a long time. And that was exactly what Steve wanted it to be. It was this kind of friendly, light computing device. For some reason, the world wants it to become this heavy-duty uh, computing device, which... You use for just everything, absolutely everything in your life, um, and has to be able to replace Mac Pros because otherwise, what's the point in them existing? Uh, and I don't really get that thought process, but um, but I do think for entertainment, the Vision Pro is a better experience, absolutely, and I'm hoping to get hands on with it very very soon. But I don't think the iPad's going anywhere anytime soon. I think uh, it's it's used so widely in education as well. Um, that it's it's going to be the kind of... I, I think it will replace, if anything, the Mac eventually, uh, but it will be for most people. The, the Mac users will stay, but the Mac users will become a smaller and smaller group because most people don't need a Mac. Most people that have a Mac right now probably don't need a Mac. Um, they would probably be better with an iPad. Right, let's see what we got. Um, Brad is saying, I want an Apple router. BT Hub needs to be plugged into a computer to change some settings. Yep. Um, to be fair, though, the Apple uh, airport routers also needed to either go through the app or go through um, airport utility on your Mac. So, yeah, most most uh, routers will need you to uh, access them through a computer, through the, through the web. Um, Plugged in with a network cable, no USB on my model. A router that just works would be lovely, and I agree there's no market for it anymore. Yeah, I think that's the big issue, is that there's just not going to be the demand for dedicated routers, which would be expensive, as, and they're trying to compete with the free router that you get from your uh, ISP. So, like, for me, and for probably the people that watch this kind of video, uh, you know, I've got the BT hub router up here and then that's attached to a switch here and then there's two Eros around the house that extend the network uh, and have guest networks and things running on them but most people don't have any of that they just have they plonk the router down that they get from their uh, from their ISP and they plug it in and they connect to it and that's that's all they ever need and most people won't even change settings on it either um, so Sigmund is saying, from a productivity point of view, I believe it's the end of the iPad beyond being a consumption device. Um, yeah, but I think that's the thing. The iPad has always kind of been the consumption device. I still think it's got its niche, uh, and its niche would be anything that uses the pencil. I think that's really where iPad needs to double down, and it needs to be more focused on art and 3D design and that kind of stuff. Obviously, 3D design is, again, going to work quite well in uh, Vision Pro because it's a, a 3D platform. But uh, but for artists and for that kind of stuff, it just makes sense. It's a, it's a really great lightweight computer. If you're a journalist and you just need to type, having an iPad with a keyboard is a really good setup. But is it better than a MacBook? Probably not, but it might be more convenient for you in certain circumstances. So uh, at the bottom here, uh, tech for your new uh, tech for your needs. Uh, 
at the current moment now the iPad is not replaced by the Vision Pro price has to come down a lot yes of course um, but in terms of the use cases and the kind of mix of uses I think that's what we're talking about here isn't is is not are people going to go and buy that instead of an iPad no because the price is completely different but does it cover the same use cases uh, does it do the things that the iPad does but better and if that's the case then yeah it's kind of it's on the way um yeah right let's uh jump into another question i cave answers who will be a permanent co-host for your podcast and i think that's a really interesting question who will be the permanent host on the uh on the podcast well it's it's me and a rotating uh group of guests that's the whole point of it is not that I'm searching for a, uh, a permanent co-host. That's not what the podcast is supposed to be. The whole idea is that I get to talk to different people from tech. Uh, we've got a, a project that I'm working on for the summer, which is going to involve multiple creators. Um, and I've already spoken to some people about being involved in that. So that's going to be really interesting. Uh, so look out for that. That will be like over probably August and maybe into September. Um, but yes, there's going to be, there's a lot of cool stuff coming for the podcast which I think you're going to enjoy. Uh, and it will be a little bit different from what we're already doing uh, for, for a period of time, and then we'll go back to uh, to the normal rumour stuff. But, uh, yeah, stand by for that one. Let's grab another question. But do keep throwing your questions and your comments into the chat. I cave answers. When will you be switching to Android? Will you review Google products? Interesting way of uh, phrasing that, when will I be switching to Google? I won't be switching to Google. At this point... Unless, uh, to, to use the phrase that Brad used on the podcast, um, unless Apple messes something up royally, basically, uh, I'm, I'm not uh, going over to Google. I'm not interested in particular in reviewing Google devices. I do keep an eye on them. Um, obviously, I, I want to know what's coming in terms of feature sets and that kind of thing from Apple's competitors. But I don't have an interest in using them day to day. It's just... They, they don't make me excited in the way that Apple's uh, gear does. So uh, there we go. Brad is saying you should let uh, the little creator named June Prusser, um or something come back on your podcast helping out smaller creators. Uh, John is great. Like John is my bestie uh, in this in this sort of tech thing like I'm always going to look up to John and I'm always going to be grateful for the fact that he uh, jumped in on one of my really early live streams and dropped me uh, a super chat, which was really, really nice and like gave me huge encouragement when I was first starting out. I, I don't know if I would have carried on uh, in the way that I did if I hadn't had that kind of encouragement from John. So John is always welcome on the podcast, on the live streams, whatever he wants to do. Uh, the door is always open for John uh, just to be very very clear on that let's grab another question i cave answers when will you be switching to android i cave answers realistically do you think the m1 max macbook pro 16 inch can last another five seven years so far i have about 34 cycles on mine i use aldent to keep the battery at 50 percent plugged in at all times so the battery health still shows 100 percent i want to get 10 years out of it is it possible i've had it since day one this year will be four years so the longevity of uh, MacBooks. This is um, this is an interesting one. So with uh, with the MacBooks, people are asking like, "Oh, is it going to last for me for ten years?" Like, I don't understand why people want a laptop, a single laptop, to last for that long. It doesn't make really too much sense for me, especially for people who are uh, techie, people who are. Um, who are interested in tech and, and want to get the most out of their machines, it doesn't make any sense to me that people would want to buy a machine and keep using it for 10 years. Uh, I've done that in the past, but in retrospect, the much better way to do this is if you want to stay at the forefront, because we all update our phones quite often. We don't tend to update our computers, which we tend to do probably more work on. The way to do it for me is as soon as the new version comes out, sell your previous one, buy the new one use the money from the previous one because the uh, macbooks hold their price really really well um you know if you are looking for a used mac mini um like an m1 mac mini 
they came out at 699 you're probably still looking at 450 today and that's four years on if you had an m2 mac mini by the time the m3 mac mini comes out that came out at 599 you'd probably still be able to get 500 for it so you're looking at maybe 100 bucks a year to uh, to stay on the cutting edge that's w that's probably the best way of doing things um with the laptops there's a little bit little bit more uh, of a gap so maybe 150 or 200 that it might drop in value over the course of its lifespan before the next version comes out but that is surely the best way to to stay on that cutting edge having the more uh more premium experience always having the newer stuff i don't see the the advantage really to running something into the ground uh, and trying to uh, and trying to keep it keep it sort of limping along for the last few years of its 10 year run uh, when it won't have software support for that last three years probably apple tends to support for about seven years with the latest software it makes far more sense for me to keep up to date and uh, and resell and resell privately because anytime you do a trade in you're going to lose way way more value right let's have a look over here so um Jasper Nielsen said, uh, "What I was away, did my question go through? I'm not 100% sure. Pop it back in the chat and I will uh, make sure that I can check that for you. Um, Brad Wedners, off to spend some time with my ever-tolerant other half. Have a great night and don't forget that Dave is on my show next Friday. Yes, so we've had Brad on my show uh, today and then we also recorded a show which will go out next Friday on uh, on Brad's channel. Uh, Sigmund is asking, I cave answers, how do you see the US court case going? Is it possible to find a judge in the modern day who can be impartial and doesn't use modern day technology? Does the case go ahead? I don't think they have to not use technology, but I guess if you're not an enthusiast, that would be helpful. But impartiality for this, I don't think that just because you use tech, that makes you uh, partisan in, in a case like this. My issue is that the DOJ seems to have accused Apple of a whole bunch of stuff that, A, has already been rectified. So, yes, there might be some uh, retrospective fines for stuff that they've done in the past, but things like uh, RCS support is already announced to be coming to the iPhone this year. Um, the cloud gaming services has already been resolved. All of these things were in the case and resolved before the case was brought. So... I don't think it's uh, anywhere near as strong as it was, and I think uh, I think the U.S. government will have a massive difficulty in establishing that Apple's market share represents a monopoly in any real terms um, at sixty-ish percent uh, of the U.S. market of premium smartphones. That that just seems like they're putting a lot of um, a lot of caveats in there to justify it as being. A monopoly, and I don't think a judge would necessarily agree. Uh, Christopher Gavin says that's why I love the Mac Mini, easy to repurpose. My kid is using one that's older than him, and I have one that's a print, uh, a file and print server, movie streamer, and Homebridge. Homebridge is great, so that you can use known home kit stuff within the house, like the Ring doorbell. Oh, cool! Yeah, like the the Mac Mini is what's inside Project Ninety One over here. That's that's what I use as my kind of main desktop computer, uh, and that's the base base model, um, the 256 8 gig, and my MacBook Air, which is running the stream and does most of my editing, is the M2 8 gigs and 512 gigs of storage, because I, I don't want to have stuff hanging off of this, whereas with the Mac Mini, more than happy to have like external hard drives, all that sort of stuff. Doesn't really make so much uh, difference when you're not moving around. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's how I kind of roll with these things. Um, I will just double check what this next uh, video is. Let's get the right question. We've done that one, so it's number nine. I cave answers. How many Apple devices does your family own? This is a danger question. Okay, so how many Apple devices does the family own? So in current use. Let's uh, go through different um, categories. Uh, some of this stuff is stuff that is uh, sort of vintage for me that I've got knocking around. So iPhone-wise, we've got 
an iPhone 4, an iPhone 5, another iPhone 5, an iPhone SE first generation, which is used for um, insulin monitoring for my son. Uh, then we've got an iPhone 6, uh, an iPhone 12, which is my work one, my wife's uh, iPhone 12 mini. She's now got a 15 as well. I've got the 14 Pro. Uh, I think that's it for phones. Cool. So that's a good start. Um, iPads, we've got an iPad Air 2, an iPad Air 4, uh, two ninth generation regular iPads, and then a couple of in bits uh, fourth generation iPads and two first generation iPad minis. Um, then we've got, in terms of Macs, right, let's talk Apple Silicon first. We've got an M1 and an M2 MacBook Air and M1 Mac Mini. Uh, then going back into Intel Macs, I've got the MacBook Air 11 inch, which was my my first ever Mac. We've also got a BlackBook uh, polycarbonate black MacBook uh, from 2007. Uh, there's a Mac Mini from 2009. There is, uh, oh, if we're going to go into the vintage stuff, um, obviously Project 91 is a 1991 Macintosh Classic 2. Uh, then we've got uh, iMac G3, iMac G4, iMac G5, uh, two Emacs, which is iMac G4 CRT version. Uh, there are Power, uh, Power PC, Power Mac G3, G4, G5. Um, so all of the Power Mac towers. We've got the iBook G3. We've got a Newton Emate 500 over here, or Emate 300. Can't remember the name. Actually, I think it's 500. Um, what else have we got Mac wise? Yeah, there's there's quite a lot uh, knocking around. If you include like the attic and stuff, um, but yeah, quite quite a lot. Uh, Apple devices. Other than that, we've got a couple of Apple TVs. We've got, um, just looking around the room, uh, obviously Apple Watches. I've got an Apple Watch Series 7 and an Apple Watch SE. And then there's an Apple Watch Series 3, one of the smaller ones. Yeah, there's quite quite a bit, quite a lot of stuff. Uh, 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 uh. Jasper Nilsson, is it possible that the next Apple TV will get over 48 kilohertz resample? I want my music... Uh, my movies and music in all its glory. Um, this might be one, if Sigmund is still in the chat, that Sigmund might be able to answer. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. Um, that's that's above my pay grade at the moment. But Sigmund, if you're in the chat, you probably have more idea of what might be going with uh, with Apple TV stuff. So if you are still here, um, drop drop a note in the chat if you've got any idea or if you've heard any rumblings. Uh, tech for your needs. The reason that people hold on to their MacBooks for so long is that they are expensive. Yes, I get it, but at the same time, if you can essentially rent the latest Mac for a hundred bucks a year, that's a better deal than buying a Mac and holding on to it until it's useless. Do you see where I'm coming from? I cave answers. Will you be buying Apple stock? Will I be buying Apple stock? No, um, for two very good reasons. The first one is if I uh, buy Apple stock, then it makes the channel seem more impartial. Now, I'm not going to say that I am someone who has a completely unbiased attitude to Apple. I don't think that would be fair to say. <clears throat> but uh, if, if I buy stock then it's in my best interest to talk up Apple because, you know, if for some reason one of my videos takes off and is super popular and people watch it and then Apple's stock value goes up as a result of it, which is very optimistic, you know, there's there's an incentive for me to only uh, be talking nicely about them. So, um, no, I'm not buying Apple stock for that reason. And the other reason is I'm poor. So I can't afford to buy it. Um, 
Anton Reese, hey, I left a comment on your classic Macintosh conversion about whether you might convert an iMac G3 to M1. I was curious if you might actually do this. I'm currently working on doing this, actually. Um, yes, it is definitely on my radar. It is something that I am looking to uh, to do. It's not a simple one because, A, it's really difficult to get hold of a, a decent resolution 4x3 display. Um, that's that's one of the big ones. Whereas with the uh, with the classic, the iPad display, the nine point seven inch, almost perfectly fits. So there wasn't a lot of modification to do there. But to get a fifteen inch four by three display that's got more than sort of ten, uh, you know, what was it like, ten sixty eight by what eight hundred something like that. Uh, resolution so it's going to be quite re low resolution uh, in most cases it's quite hard to find higher resolutions than that so it's not as compelling to do um, but yes I would like to because the G3 that I've got has a failing graphics card so it's kind of going to be useless as uh, as a piece that I can pull down and, and, and do stuff with so um, yeah I would like to do that Sigmund is saying it is possible hardware wise right now this is the um, Apple TV uh, 48 kilohertz thing. Um, but from a software predictions perspective, I see Apple allowing offline downloads as a way to push further into their green initiative we'll see in June. Sorry, throat was getting a little dry there, guys. I found a display that's 14.1 inches and 1500 by 1050. That's pretty good. I would go with that if I were you. I don't think you're going to find a much better display than that. Um, they are 15 inch, I believe, 15 inch displays. Yeah. So you will need some sort of a surround for that uh, to make it fit in. But uh, yeah, perfect. That sounds really, really good. Um, excited to see how you get on with it. Right, let's see what we've got here. Okay, and on the same kind of topic. A cave answers. When is the new Apple TV coming? New Apple TVs. Um, I don't know when it's going to be coming. This is a difficult one because Apple doesn't seem to have any kind of consistency to when these uh, release we have heard rumors um but not consistently we've heard that there might be you know people have been talking about them coming with an m1 or an m2 chip inside i don't see that happening at all i do think though that apple putting an a17 pro inside an apple tv would be amazing because then you've got ray tracing and it's only got to drive one display at a time, so that seems like it would be a really good way to kind of bring more of Apple's gaming ambition to the living room. That would be really cool from my point of view. Um, but no, we've not really heard any rumours on it, which is uh, a little bit annoying. Uh, Christopher Gavin's just said uh, Apple TV with camera. Yeah, there's also been rumours about this. I don't think we've seen any kind of leaks of uh, any, you know, any code uh, snippets that I've noticed. Um, and you're saying, yeah, for FaceTime, I agree. They've brought FaceTime as the app to uh, to Apple TV now, but that is really to use with continuity camera, which is what I film all of this on. This is continuity camera. This is my iPhone 15, uh, my iPhone 14 Pro, sorry, um, wirelessly sending this to my I, uh, to my MacBook which is then going into OBS and then coming out to you guys on uh, YouTube. The cameras in your iPhone will always be better than what you can get in a computer. So I would definitely say like there's not a massive amount of uh, need to put a camera into the Apple TV box itself. And also, if you think about the way that we set up our systems these days, our, our home entertainment most people, I think, mount their TVs on the wall now, um, which means then where does your Apple TV go? Does it have to get a completely new form factor so that the Apple TV itself can like hook over the top of your TV um, to point that camera at you? And in a lounge situation, are you likely to be in the right position for that? Uh, is it going to be 
you know, is is that going to be the best way to do it? You would have to have quite a wide angle and then um, use center stage to to pick you up, which means if you've got a wide angle, then you're going to be distorted if you're at the side. It's it's a very difficult thing. It's not anywhere near as easy as as it would sound to just throw a camera on the top of your TV and everything is good. Um, I think there's a difference when you're talking about on a computer because it's you sitting at the computer at a fairly fixed distance that most most people is fairly consistent regardless of whether you're on an iMac or a MacBook or something like that. You're going to have a, a fairly consistent experience with that. But with the TV, it could be all over the place. I, I don't quite know uh, what the best way would be for that. We have heard these rumours of Apple doing uh, tabletop robotics, which is really interesting. And that would be, I mean, we've just started hearing now about the idea of having a display attached to the outside, which would mimic the movements of the person on the other end. So, uh, you know, looking around the room, nodding, like the actual display nodding. I, I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know if that would be just super odd super weird or if it would actually be pretty cool um but yeah let me know in the in the chat what you think on that one but uh yeah christopher gavin saying it does a good job in apple music and apple tv that it turns into a karaoke with green uh karaoke box with green screen effects that's pretty cool i like that i didn't know you could do that obviously i know you get your lyrics on apple tv and you can dip the uh the vocals now as well on some tracks not all tracks um but yeah pretty pretty awesome. I cave answers. Can we get a MacBook Ultra? Maybe in the air format 18 inches. MacBook Ultra. Is this a thing that we think is going to happen? Now, the the question is saying maybe an iPad Air that's 18 inches. Um, and I think the reason we've gone to that is because we had uh, six, uh, 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. The 16 inch MacBook Pro has the biggest battery that you can legally put in that thing and be able to take it on an aircraft. So I don't think that's going to be um, a practical thing to make any bigger. Going to a MacBook Air and making that that much bigger, I, I just don't see the advantage of it. I don't know who would want this. Um, you know, it's got great battery life already. The 15 inch is brand new. We haven't had a, a MacBook Air this big for ever. It's never been this big. Like the large one used to be the 13 inch and then you went down to the 11. So I, I don't see the the call for this. I don't see who is crying out for it, but uh, maybe I'm completely wrong. And if they did make an 18 inch MacBook Air, I think they would call it the... 18 inch macbook air as opposed to the ultra i don't think there was ever um a, an ultra macbook coming I, I i don't remember any rumors for this uh but i do remember people asking me because they wanted bigger macs i cave answers any design or feature leaks for the airpods fourth gen and pros that are coming in 2025 i don't believe we've had any real rumors there has been a few ideas about what could come to the airpods pro and that would be things like heart rate monitors potentially or uh, thermometers coming to them we've heard that the next generation of regular airpods may get some form of uh, active noise cancellation which will be interesting um, and i hope that doesn't mean that they're going to get the rubber tips because if they do then i'll be sticking with the older ones because i do not like rubbery silicon tips in my ears that i'm not a fan of those um but yeah that i think it's just it's time for a new generation uh maybe a slightly new design but ears haven't changed that much in the past three years so um it just depends on what fits anton reese is saying i'm not sure if you already talked about this but are there any updates on the new ipad pros uh the only update that we've got really is from mark Gurman, and that is that we're expecting them the week commencing the 6th of may now, that would place them uh, probably being announced on the Tuesday. Pre-orders probably starting on the Friday and shipping the following Friday. Unless they come at the end of April and the week commencing the 6th of May is, in fact, uh, the shipping week. We don't know. We don't know. Um, we know basically what we're getting. We're getting OLED displays. We're potentially getting those uh, FaceTime cameras moved onto the longer side. We are potentially getting um, 
things like new Apple pencils and new uh, new keyboard and uh, trackpads. Uh, we're also potentially getting a larger iPad Air because everything has to come in multiple sizes now. That's important. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think there's any anything else huge. We've heard some rumors of MagSafe coming to them, but then we've also heard that they're not getting really a redesign. They're getting the OLED displays, but they might get thinner, but maybe they won't get thinner. And I do think that if they are going to actually redesign, redesign, as in like maybe put a glass back on there so that you could use MagSafe, then that would definitely warrant an event but uh, nobody else seems to think so so it's a very strange situation and I'm not really sure what else we can expect uh, do we have one more question let me just check no that was our last question so if you guys in the chat have got any questions you want uh, to get in before we finish off we're going to finish off in about 10 minutes up here and uh, yeah it's been it's been a bit of a weird week for Apple really. There's just been some yeah, you know, not any real big news. I think I guess the biggest bit would be M4 being kind of teased to be coming before the end of this year, which always makes me happy because I've been saying for years and years that I think Apple is planning to do an update every year for the M chips just as they do for the A chips. It makes all the sense in the world. And a lot of people kept going, "No, there's no reason that they would do that." didn't you uh saying that there's there's just it's always going to be 18 months but it doesn't seem to be does it doesn't seem to be but um yeah if there's no more questions and it does seem like the ch uh, the chat's gone a little bit slower over here so i am gonna start to wrap this one up um we do have the wwdc t-shirts that we're doing again this year so you can head over to icavedave.com forward slash dub dub uh, and you can submit your Memoji or you can submit your Vision Pro persona. Uh, and it will appear on our WWDC t-shirt for the year. So get over there and do that as quick as you can. That would be lovely. Um, Michael Pepper Tech is saying, Snapdragon X Elite thoughts. So I've done a full video on this. And uh, my thoughts are, I, I don't think we're in trouble in Apple land at the moment. So they're comparing it to the M3 which is obviously the slowest of Apple's current generation of processors. And it is 21% faster in multi-core when it uses 80 watts of power when the M3 is using about 21 to 22. So uh, I don't think there's going to be any real danger there. There is going to be a laptop version of that uh, Snapdragon X Elite chip. I don't think it will run as quickly as that. Um, in single core, it's about 28% slower than the M3 as well. So that's where you kind of get your how snappy something feels. So I don't think it's a, a massive threat. And this this chip, it's a Nuvia chip as well. So it's the guys who used to work for Apple in chip design doing Apple Silicon. This chip is 12 performance cores. And they just about managed to get it to twenty one percent faster than the uh, the M three, which has four performance cores. I I think uh, Apple's still doing okay. I think we're we're going to be fine. I think the battery life will be maybe half of what you get in an M three. So, and and by the time it comes out, the M four is basically going to be around the corner, uh, which is what I was saying in the video. I think they'll be out by the end of the year. Mark Gurman has kind of confirmed they'll be out by the end of the year. Oh, Christopher Gavin, thank you so much. Thank you so much. That's the third time you've uh, you've super chatted me, so much appreciated, my friend. Right, let's check into these other question, uh, these other comments here. So, uh, John is saying, just wanted to thank you for assuring us that the MacBook Air is totally good enough. Loving my refurbished fifteen inch. I didn't even know they were doing refurbished fifteens already. That's awesome, but I'm glad you're happy with it. Um, and Don Reese, one last thing to mention is that the opening for the 15-inch CRT on the G3 is actually quite nicely fitting a 14.1-inch LCD. I think the sizing is different. Yeah, so uh, CRTs are definitely um, sized differently. Oh, Sigmund, thank you so much, my friend. Really appreciate that, mate. Um, 
yeah, sizing is different for CRTs. I think it's like you get the actual size of the tube and then you have like a visible size within that. So I think that's probably what it is. The aperture of the, the case is smaller than the, um, the thing. But there we go. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you all for being here. Really appreciate the super chats. And uh, don't forget to go and check out the uh, the podcast that we put out earlier today if you haven't already. Thank you so much. And we will see you in the next one.